Hi, this is Shadi, and today we're going to be discussing Oda Sensei and Hickson Gracie. This video, before I say anything, and before you go down to the comments and telling me about how Hickson beat up uh, the Japanese fighters, relax. This is a praise to Hickson, in my opinion, because the foundation, as much as people think that it is just the ground floor and what's underneath it, the foundation reaches the roof. The foundation will always be there you can change the elevations you can change the facade the interior walls glass marble etc you know kind of like the trends that come and go but at the end of the day the foundation will always be there and in my opinion Hickson's jiu-jitsu is a continuation of what Oda did and we're gonna see several examples of uh, the footage of Oda and of course uh, Hickson's work and see why both perfected the foundations and again this video is a praise to Hickson and it is the continuation of the foundation of judo that was laid out by Oda Sensei so uh, again Hickson is one of my favorite Gracie fighters and you know this so first let's start with guard pass so to see the Hickson classical guard pass is the following you actually get up try to put pressure with your hands keep a strong base this is the foundation of invisible jiu-jitsu base weight distribution and of course leverage so here he has a strong base he starts to rip at the guard and pulls his butt back to open it up and from there he underhooks while pinning the other leg with his elbow to of course avoid a triangle and from there grabs the lapel shifts his weight to the side drops grabs uh, what is the extremity of the jacket or the pants and from there proceeds to shift his weight to the side eventually getting uh, the pass so when it comes to Oda he performed several passes like here your classical Toreando neon belly from there knee slice and here notice he pulls back gets back up strong base look at his legs under hooks grabs the opposite lapel as he was doing blocks with his elbow the other leg shifts his weight to the side drops low and from there proceeds to shift his weight uh, or his hips close to the head of uke getting eventually the pass so now let's talk about leverage and weight distribution this is crucial even by today's judo standards so this is the side headlock uh, escape i've never seen anyone do it uh, or rarely done in judo even today so here he explains that you actually go to them get your hips sideways not completely pinned to the floor so here he says his arm is stuck he cannot get it uh, out so he can push against the head and does the classical escape so here he goes to the side gets his hips uh, elevated he's on his side completely and then bridges as he is on the side and from there he can roll them easily over so this is a brilliant demonstration of weight distribution and of course leverage here as he is rolling to his side pedro is defenseless so this is let's see it here again pedro is pinning him and he hugs and goes to the side you need that swing to get that weight off of your hips and get them to the side and you should keep your legs apart and from there you bridge sideways and you roll so here let's see it from this angle so you can understand it better so you need that swing you cannot just roll like this because they're much stronger than you so you get that swing you go to the side lotus how he pins his legs and pivots or bridges i'm sorry as he is on his side and gets to the other side and then gets that leverage so here you have to be on your side as you are hugging them not roll them like this over you you actually need to roll them uh, in front of you so that's why the bridging happens so you roll here it explains that you have to use your legs to get the bridge as you are on your side not you don't roll them directly to your side you actually get them above you and almost like behind you in a sense and from there you roll them over so this is a great lesson in weight distribution and of course leverage so here let's see how oda is demonstrating these basics of course 
and also opening up the legs so you can actually get a good shift and good base. Uh, he mastered these types of, uh, I would say, turnovers from the bottom. This one here, in my opinion, is my favorite. The Kuzure Kezagatame. Look at how he shifts his legs, shifts his hips, and from there he gets the leverage uh, correct so he can get up and reverse the pin. So you have weight distribution and, of course, leverage following them. Uh, this is the same uh, principles being applied by Oda Sensei. Notice here the tilt of the neck and how it was crucial uh, because you needed to roll diagonally because once you roll diagonally it is very difficult for them to defend your roll or post their arm or anything and from there you get much stronger leverage to uh, get them rolling. Let's talk about that. Let's see that tilt of the head but with Hickson this time here he explains that when you tilt the head when doing a, a mount escape, you actually roll diagonally and not directly to your side, and thus a you know posting of the arm, uh, a defense against that uh, what he calls upa, uh, becomes very difficult. So here the tilt is the invisible detail. So here he posts his arm and yet he cannot defend it and gets rolled over. Uh, this is a similar. Uh, tilt of the neck that you saw Oda doing just a few seconds ago before shifting his whole body around it So again, this is a continuation of what Oda sensei did and in my opinion It is beautiful perfecting the foundation will always be great. So now let's talk about invisible setups The first one here or they're not many actually but this one here the cross choke from the side is uh, Great normally the cross choke it is seen or shown from you know, close guard or uh, mount but here he is turning uh, into north south he says that when they hug you you actually get underneath their arm like over under hooking it and getting the lapel and when you turn to the other side it is actually pinned so here they lost that arm and from there you can easily uh, do like a kind of like a katate jime type of choke but you have the lapel held from the neck down so here he explained that you are here you have the arm isolated and from there you can do like a katate jime but it's a cross stroke from the side because you have the lapel underneath and you get the tap so this is a invisible setup uh, from side control as you are hovering over them they cannot see it obviously and you can isolate the arm so Oda did many of them, like the side entry of the triangle, this one here I'll show you in a bit, and the Kanto choke from the side, of course I'll show it to you. So here he explains the many defenses, but we'll skip it. So like I said, the cross choke, you, you basically learn it like this, or from the guard, but from the side you can set up so many things like this one here, the Kanto choke, uh, as you raise your leg, and here he underhooks the arm, and slice gets the lapel uses his wrist to flick the chin up and from there he gets the choke notice how the arm is isolated you can see it from the far behind oh that's back actually and here he gets the tap now when it comes to Hickson in my opinion it is a plus and he says that if you don't know self-defense you don't know jujitsu and i'm very glad that he is still very militant towards self-defense and the teachings of self-defense and not just sports jujitsu ibjjf ijf the olympics uh, etc uh, how effective is self-defense teaching i i truly don't know i've never trained with them or valente brothers or any of these people who are very keen on self-defense but the same uh principles are still applied base weight distribution leverage etc so uh, again this is a plus for Hickson especially in today's age because Oda's days it was completely the opposite um, and I'll explain it so back in the Oda days Oda did not concern himself with this aspect because keep in mind uh, he was very active or he was leader in the Niwaza movement I'd say you know 1910s 20s 30s and back then, you know, IJF, Olympics, all these things just wasn't there. Competition obviously was there, but a lot of these dojos and uh, schools were still teaching kata and self-defense. So he was mainly concerned with collecting all of the medals in these schools. And I believe his team that he coached reigned supreme uh, seven years, if I'm not mistaken. So he did pull guard. He did... Uh, 
you know, barely uh, engaged in Tachiwaza, the group fighting Kumite, and took the fight to the ground often. And that was his strategy, and it was a brilliant strategy. And through it, he crafted this Neiwaza that we have today that it is still very much efficient. And a lot of judokas today, when they get pain, they just give up. Uh, all these turnovers that he's doing can still be very much useful today and be taught today. So again, like I said, this video is a praise to Hickson for continuing this type of conceptual work, I would say, or this type of training, this type of work, this focus on this particular aspects that will always make you a champion regardless of the times. Keep in mind, the foundation will always be there, but everything else, like the glass facade, the marble walls, um, the glass ceiling, whatever, they will come and go, just like the Berambolo, lapel guard, leg lock, trends come and go, but the foundation will always be there. So if you have anything else to add, let me know down below. Also consider supporting me on Patreon. I have exclusive content for the patrons only. I post there once a week, but my main content will always be here. So uh, don't feel obliged, but your support would mean greatly. This was Shadi, and thank you for listening.